Okay guys, we're back here at Fur Harvesters and uh, today is uh, fur drumming day. And as you can see, there's, uh, there's quite a bit of fur coming in. And today Jim's gonna show us the steps and procedures in drumming fur, so take it away Jim. Okay, we're at uh, Fur Harvesters Depot here in Goose Bay, Labrador, Canada. And we're gonna drum these uh, Pine Martin uh, in this fur drum before they go to auction. So they'll be already cleaned and they're already ticketed. So when they get at auction, they can go straight to the grader's table. What we're gonna to use to uh, grade these skins with, uh, excuse me, drum these skins, is a combination of corn grit. Corn grit. We've got uh, clean, clean sawdust from a, uh, from a wood miser bandsaw that has been sifted and dried and we've also got the uh, hardwood sawdust so we put put a combination of those three drumming ingredients in the drum that has paddles on them that'll rotate and rotate the pelts and we can't just drum it in dry coal sawdust we have to warm that sawdust up and the way to warm that sawdust up, we add hot water and as a degreaser and a lustrizer, we put in this, uh, this uh, Everglaze from a, a furrier in the United States. And this uh, cleans and glazes your fur, restores the natural oil, uh, it adds color depth, separates each hair, the left the leather is left soft and pliable and adds nice color depth and uh, a nice shine to the fur. We only put this stuff on the Pine Martin because the Pine Martin are our most valuable fur here in Labrador so we save it and, and just use it on the Pine Martin. So the first thing we do is to put the combination. I won't tell you my secret formula, the, 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 how much of each we use, but we've got hot water here and this will with the glaze already mixed, we'll pour that in the drum because we have to warm up that sawdust. Now, of course, we got to, uh, the next step, we got to spin the drum before we put any pelts in and just make sure that the sawdust is uh, warm but not damp because we do not want the pelts to get damp. We just want to clean them. We're not trying to, we don't want to have to spread them all on a board again. So we're going to spin this for a bit and watch it spin and we'll be back in a minute. Okay, we just, uh, we're just checking the, uh, the drum here now after we put the liquid in. And just to make sure the sawdust is not too damp. The sawdust is very good. It's nice and warm but not damp, so we're going to throw in about maybe uh, 30 of these Pine Martin at one time. Spin them for 15 minutes. And make sure the cover uh, door don't come off. Boy, they're going to look great. They're going to look super. I don't know of anyone else that does this, but uh, we do it here. And I think the trappers really appreciate it because a lot of times that uh, you know trappers you usually get this little gum, small gum specks on your pine martin and and little matted matted specks on your martin and they're always they're always asking me whether they should try to uh, you know pick it out themselves or or cut it out and I said no let's just put it in the drum because a lot of the times in this drum these little these little mats uh, will start to loosen up and when I put it on the table here and run a uh, one of these slicker brushes through it they'll just come right out and you wouldn't even tell that the mat was even there so uh, we're gonna we're gonna give it a whirl now and see what happens Okay, the Pine Martin's been in the drum now for 15 minutes, turning. We're going to take them. Have you already seen any? But 
we're going to take them out and uh, see how they look. I generally uh, wear a mask because of the dust when I'm shaking, but just for uh, video purposes here right now, I'll, I'll leave the mask off my face so it's easier to talk. We don't have a shaker drum, we have to shake all the sawdust by hand, and that means uh, pretty time consuming. if you noticed it or not but that little gum speck that was right here just crystallized as soon as I put the brush on it just crystallized I guess I guess from the heat of the drum and stuff that was gone can't see it anymore perfect now the uh, the grader don't have to make a judgment call anymore it's, it's gone. wouldn't get service like that only by I guess only by someone foolish not foolish like me to, to do all this but uh, uh, here's another gum, gum speck gone, crystallized, gone. But if it, you know, if it, if it increases the value of the pine marten for the trapper, uh, it's better for the trapper. Of course, I work on commission. The more the trapper gets for his fur, of course, the more uh, me as the agent will get, because I receive a, just a small percentage. But uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not do, doing this for my health. There's a method to my madness. I mean, if a guy can get a $130 average as opposed to say a $110 average, well, it's worth it to me. And everybody's happy. For auction, for auction house could uh, could do all of that, you know, up there where they're handling all, uh, thousands and thousands of skins. They just don't have the manpower. Now I've got the time, and I enjoy working with fur, so if I can make them look beautiful, I will. It's the name of the game. Everybody's fur gets put, put in the drum together. They all got the barcode. If I wanted to know who owned that skin, I'd just go over and look in my logbook and I could see, see the trapper that owned that skin and I could say, wow, you got a beautiful skin. And here we have a few more little... It's gone, disappeared. Brushes right out. Okay, 
Here we had another Martin, another pine Martin that just came out of the drum. It had a uh, it had a gum gum spot on it. And I talked to the grader at Fur Harvesters today and asked them what the trapper should do about it when they when they come into a situation where they got <coughs> excuse me gum on their pelts. He said, well, the best thing to do is leave it because it could do more damage. So I told him I was drumming and uh, and you know when I get this hand on, hands on approach and be able to do them with the slicker brush after they've come out of the drum. I said a lot of times, uh, you know, these 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 mats will come out without pulling any fur. They'll just disintegrate. So had this trapper sent this fur to auction and it had this gum mark on it, the grader would have had to make a judgment decision. Let's say it was a uh, let's say for instance it was a select pelt. If it had the gum mark on, mark on, you probably would have had to degrade it, put it down to the next pelt, but uh, next uh, next grade. But by running this brush through them after they come out of the drum, which can't be done done at auction, of course. Like I told you before, they're just too many pelts. They they don't have the manpower to do that. I I I, I managed to save the trapper uh, instead of this pelt going down to the next grade. It's it's uh, it's boosted up to its original grade, which, oh, in my estimation here, was probably a uh, well, it wouldn't be select, but probably a first second. So I hope you appreciate all the work I'm putting into it. <laughs> My throat gets so bad after you know, 12 hours in here. I'll leave the mask later. Just uh, just drummed up the Big Lands Trappers uh, uh, all Martin catch. This last one. Overall, the average is very very good. It felt so really good. Now they're all going to go in like. Well, not all of them, but generally they're all in the uh, like first, second grade, which is a grade, grade below the select, and uh, it's going to have a great average, there's no doubt. We can tell if it's his pelt because of the green mark, green mark across through the uh, barcode. Now we're going to continue on and do everybody else's pelts and try to make them look just as good. Perfect. Guys, this is my catch now uh, that I got so far. Plus, I got five red boards ready to come off. And uh, I'm gonna give a big thank you to Jim because I know that uh, with Jim handling my fur, I'm gonna get the best possible return. And uh, you're looking at one happy trapper because that's just awesome. So anyway, thank you, Jim, and uh, thank you to all of you who just watched my vids. I appreciate it very much, and uh, don't forget to subscribe to the Big Land Trapper channel. Thank you. Thank you.